hammer one. In my house I use a lot of these LED panels to light up my rooms and in the five years that I've been living here some of them failed so I had to replace them and today we're gonna look at few of those and we'll try to repair them and see what it takes and if they are repairable at all. These lights are typically comprised of the panel itself that has the LED strip on the outside and a driver that converts the 220 volts coming in from the mains down to voltage that's designed for the LED strip and that's different depending on the type of the panel. Most importantly this driver reduced the current to specific uh, amperage and this one for example you can see that it outputs DC 54 to 84 volts at 300 milliamps depending on the size of the panel. This one is rated 9 to 18 watts and this one is an 80 watts panel so you can imagine that they are being driven at their maximum with these panels. Right now at the moment I have no reason to believe that the panel itself is damaged in any way but we're gonna take a look at the driver and I've already disassembled one. They're being opened by popping up the cover and that reveals a small circuit board with a handful of components. The typical construction of these uh, drivers are that we have a bridge rectifier at the end, we have the control chip, a transformer or a choke depending on the uh, construction and few resistors that uh, determine the current that goes through the panel. You can probably already see what's wrong with this one. This is a typical failure mode where one or both of these capacitors will be bulged up. That means that they are, they've lost their capacitance. So this driver is no longer capable of driving the LEDs. So I have few of these and we'll try to repair them in this video by trying and replacing the capacitors. And before going any further in the video, let me tell you about today's sponsor, which is Altium 365. Altium 365 is a cloud-based platform that offers a variety of tools for electronic design, collaboration, and project management. It comes as part of your Altium Designer subscription, and with it, you can view, simulate, and test your electronic projects from anywhere using just a web browser. The platform offers collaboration tool for teams, but it also has very valuable features for individual designers like me, which include version control, secure access to design files, and the ability to publicly share PCB designs and schematics that I design for my audience. You can use Altium 365 to start development on your project directly with version control, and never worry about having a secure backup of your work. Visit the link in the video description to get a free trial of Altium Designer with Altium 365 and get a 25% discount coupon of any subscription. These capacitors are usually really cheap and I'll have buying links down in the video description. So if you want to replace yours, make sure to first check the value and then buy the correct value capacitor that you have for your boards. On this one here, you can even notice that they didn't do uh, good soldering job on the transformer here because I can see that the legs are not even soldered properly here so maybe on top of the ca capacitor we also have some other issue on the board we'll try to go over all of the boards and see how we can fix them okay so I'm gonna start by first adding some fresh solder to these joints Adding some flux would have been nice, but we'll do this one like this. The new solder should have enough flux so it gets connected with the old one and that would add some of the lead that's in this new solder to the old one and that would lower its melting temperature. I have the iron set at 380 degrees Celsius, so that should be enough for what we're trying to do. Okay, now first I'll try to just push the legs a bit of this transformer. I know if I'm going to be successful in that. Yeah, that, that, that would be tricky to be done, but you can see that now we have solder 
on the inside and that should have those legs connected together. Now let's try and remove this capacitor. And before removing the capacitor, make sure to figure out what's the correct polarity because these are polarized capacitor. You can see they're marked negative on the side with the uh, transformer. So we'll keep that in mind for replacing it later. I'll remove this by just hitting up the pads and pulling from the bottom. One of them is out and we have the capacitor out. Let's try and clean up the holes here a bit. I have the capacitor in the holes. Let's solder it in place. Again, making sure to obey the polarity. We have negative on the right and I'm leaving a bit of slack in the legs so we can bend it as it was previously on top of the uh, controller here. So I'll bend this like that. That should be fine. Let's cut these extra wires. And let's also replace this other capacitor. And here we have the old one out. And you can see that here we have the polarity marked as well on the board. So negative is on the far side from me and positive we have marked here. So the new capacitor we will add with the same polarity. This time we can keep it flash with the PCB. Let's spread this out and let's now solder it in place. That would be the easy part. So now with the capacitors replaced, let's return it back in its case. And we'll give it a try to see if this light will work or not. Uh, because I don't want any bangs on my workbench, I'm not sure if this is gonna work or not. I'm gonna be using my dim bulb tester. So these light bulb will be in series with the module and we'll see if there is a short circuit or something wrong with this one. The worst thing that will happen is this light bulb will turn on. So uh, you can see a video up here how I build it and it's uh, I recommend that you build one for yourself as well. Okay, so here is the test setup. I have the light connected to its connector and it goes to the bulb tester that has the light bulb in series and I'm gonna plug this power cord here. Hopefully if the light is fixed, then we should see it glow. So let me know down in the comments your th if it's gonna light or not. And unfortunately it's not lighting up. Okay, so let's try to confirm if it's the driver or the panel. You can notice here I have this replaced with the square panel. I'm gonna plug it in and you can see that this one lights up. So we know we have a good driver and that panel is bad. So one of them is fixed. Let's see how many of the drivers we can also fix. Okay, so here's the second controller. I've marked the first one as okay, as well as the panel. Let's connect and connect them and Let's see if, we, if it will light up. Let's properly connect the wires and let's plug it in. And this one works as well. So let's mark it and continue. Okay, so I did these two off camera and let's try them out with the same setup. 
I have everything connected to the known good panel and this one works so let's disconnect it I'm gonna write okay Okay, last one in, and that one also works. And we now have four good LED drivers meant for this 18 watt LED panels. Unfortunately, this panel doesn't work. And before I call this video done, I'm gonna try and open this up and show you what's the construction inside and maybe even figure out why this panel is not uh, lighting up. I'm guessing that there is a burnt diode inside, but we'll see once we open it up. Okay, so we've lifted the outer cover. Inside we have this piece of reflective paper. Then we have the diffuser. Let me try and grab it with I'll use the screwdriver and this one is glass so we need to be a bit careful with it and you can see that it's made so it reflects the light in every direction we have the LED strip and then we have the front cover Now the LEDs themselves are this strip that goes all around and I believe that all of them are connected in series. We can confirm that with the multimeter. And here is a close up of the LEDs. I have my multimeter in diode mode and you can see that when I touch them, some of them light up. Let me turn off the lights so you can see this better. If I touch them, you see that a bunch of them light up from the multimeter battery, meaning that we have sections of five LEDs in parallel that are then wired in series. And if I go around, so those are all working. That's working, that's working. So I'm jumping five LEDs at a time until we reach this bunch. And as you can see here in this close up, this bunch of five LEDs are all burnt. So we have them lighting before that and we have them lighting after that but this section none of the LEDs is actually working and what happened here is that maybe one of them failed and now the four LEDs will have to distribute the current and that would mean that they have like 20% more electricity from that one failed LED that they need to share and it's just an avalanche from there where all of the LEDs in that section will fail and they will no longer conduct current through the rest of the LEDs and then this basically renders uh, this light as uh, broken. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this one and if I find some other panel that has burnt LED I'm going to use one panel as a donor and then just using some hot air, I'll desolder the LEDs and then resolder them on the other panel. And hopefully that way I can also fix a broken panel like this one. I'm not saying that it's really worthwhile, but you saw that the controllers were relatively easy and fast to be fixed. And the time spent working on them is definitely worthwhile because we end up with four modules that we can still use. 
on the panels that will still work and that way we reduce a lot of waste that would otherwise end up in the garbage. I hope that you liked this video and if you did then be sure to uh, subscribe to the channel. I have a playlist with a lot of repairs that I do including some, some other LED lights. So be sure to check them out and I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers!